Hello world, welcome to part one of me trying to build an automated uh, economics article writer using machine learning and Python to post to a website. Uh, I own this website right here, the financial genome project.net. And basically it's an economics uh, slash personal finance website. And I stopped posting on it in January uh, 2020 to focus on this website or on this YouTube channel. And so I didn't really enjoy the writing process that much. And so um, I thought I would try and see if machine learning can help write economics articles and post to a website. So today we'll be looking at three different machine, machine learning models to analyze the famous economics book by Adam Smith called The Wealth of Nations. Um, but first, welcome to the 128th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Uh, we've played with machine learning before in a uh, previous video where we tried to, uh, we saw some code on YouTube and see if it was actually valid, if it could predict stock market prices. And so you can watch that by clicking here. Um, and then full disclosure, none of these three codes are my own, but they are different slight variations of the examples on the official TensorFlow and Keras uh, website. So I, you know, we're all kind of open source, but I am literally using the codes from three other people. Uh, the first um, model we'll look at uses three layers. And it uses the Natural Language Toolkit and LTK library to kind of pre-process the um, text. The second code uses only two layers and does not use NLTK. And then the third one just uses one layer but uses a different way of doing it and it provides the best result. And so um, I'll put a link in the description for all three of the codes down below. Uh, we'll run the third one together um, and since it provided yielded the best results and the sec the first and second codes can take up to 20 to 30 minutes maybe an hour um, and that's because I have a gaming laptop and uh, the second I start these machine learning models the training uh, my laptop basically catches on fire so not really but uh, fans turn on full speed and uh, you could tell it's aggressively trying to compute. Um, so let's check out the third model together by Neuro9. And so this one yielded the best results. And so let's just run it together. And what it's going to do is it's going to read this Wealth of Nations text. Um, that wasn't the best way to do it. Let, let's look at the text real quick. So I downloaded this from Project Gutenberg. And as you can tell from up here, it's the whole book right here. Um, yeah. So let's run it. And so we're going to cover these warnings. I left these TensorFlow warnings on here. But some people will get an error saying, um, QDART 64110DL cannot be found and then you'll get a bunch of errors and we'll cover how to fix those when we go through the code. And so what it's going to do, it's going to run four epochs or training and um, it's going to, and then I will cut to when that's over when it's done. All right, we're down to about the last 10 seconds of the epoch running, or the fourth epoch. And then it will process this and generate text, um, 300 characters. And we'll go over what this 0.8 means in a little bit. But it's going to um, generate and predict 300 characters of the Wealth of Nations text. So the code says, of the people, the respective produce which is except as the laborians of more completers, the proportion would be their thry equal to carry they seems to have rate, which is a certain namely. Discolates that by unification, un unfiction the rent, 
and cases or properly to the pressing traces through the present times. All right, so probably uh, not the most coherent uh, phrase of 300 characters. But again, that was only, um, and we'll go over through the model, but that was kind of a low level training model. And so let's go through the code together and kind of compare and contrast the three, um, three different models we choose. So this one is from Neural9. Um, go check out his, he is one of the people I'm subscribed to as a fellow Python programmer. And so what he does is um, first he gets the file path. Oh, first let's go through the imports. So we import random, um, then you'll need to import NumPy. So you can just quickly pip install NumPy. Then depending on which Python, I'm running 3.8. So you can pip install TensorFlow, then pip install Keras. So even though we don't explicitly use TensorFlow here, um, we do use these models, layers, and optimizers with Keras, but they belong to the TensorFlow library. So if you're going to start machine learning, step one is to pip install TensorFlow. Then you need to, um, we'll go here, because what you need to do is install uh, two other uh, software to run machine learning. So first, you'll need to uh, make sure your GPU drivers, if you have a GPU, are correctly installed. Um, then you'll need to download this CUDA toolkit. Um, then you'll need to download this CUDNN SDK. And you have to uh, log in. So you have to create an account to download this. So if you don't do all three of these, try to do them in order. So pip install TensorFlow. Then install the, um, here we go, the CUDA toolkit by clicking on here. And I'll leave a link to here in the description. And then download the CUDDNN SD kit. All right. And then you can import these. Now, all three of these use this sequential as the model. Right. So this first one is from Stack Abuse. This next one is from this Pranjal 52. And I'll leave links to these in the description. So we they all use sequential, right? And we use sequential in our machine learning stock prediction. OK. Then they all use dense as the layer, right? Now we're building machine learning layers. Dense. But this is where they kind of change. So. One uses dropout, the second one uses dropout, the third one, the one we just ran together, does not use dropout. They all use LSTM, which is the long-term, short-term memory model. And then not all of them use activation. So you will have to, um, the first two uses the NumPy utilities. And then this one that I'm using now uses an optimizer called RMS prop. And I believe the others, you don't need to import it, but they use a um, optimizer called Atom. And we'll go over that in a second. So first, you can go to this uh, Project Gutenberg and uh, find a book that you want to use. Try to find a good substantial book. So these two, um, what's it called? Models that you can get from TensorFlow or Keras that Stack Abuse and Pranjal use, they download um, either Shakespeare sonnets or Frankenstein, the old school classic Frankenstein. And the reason why is because there's just a lot of text and the Wealth of Nations has a lot of text. So then we're going to, uh, so that is right here, Wealth of Nations. I also use Frankenstein, for example. And I tried to use my articles uh, where I downloaded three or four articles from uh, Zero Edge, which is a um, kind of far right leaning economics blog, but I don't have that many characters for it to uh, for it to do good uh, machine learning, and uh, the text that it generated was just garbage. 
So um, we're going to take the 300,000th characters to the 800,000 because if you did it on the entire Wealth of Nations text or Frankenstein or Shakespeare, your machine learning would take, you know, four hours. Um, so we're going to read that, decode it into UTF-8 and make it all lowercase. And this just makes it easier for the machine learning to go. And that's what we do for all of these here. It's the same code. Um, I changed these to 4,000s because these two models take like four hours to run. And then all of them do a variation of the same thing. So they sort them and then put them in a set. And then they change the characters, each individual character into an index and then change that index back to a character because you'll need both of these um, enumerated dictionaries. So they all kind of do that. The same thing right here. So just it's just labeled a little bit different. So n to character, character to n is the same thing as character to index, index to characters. Now this one uses natural language toolkit, the first one, and it basically tokenizes each word. And then it also um, notices the stop words, and I'm not a big fan of that. And so I'll show you what those two yielded um, as we get to the end. Then they all take a sequence length, which is how much of the uh, code they want to sample. They all use a step size. They create two empty dictionaries to put sentences and next characters in, um, but they call it X and Y. Sequence lengths are different, but all of them create an X and Y data because that's how you do machine learning. And then they all go through an iterative, a different iterative um, process to use NumPy to create um, different sequences, right? So my my YouTube channel is not a tutorial, so we're not going to go into sequencing uh, machine learning, but they all use NumPy, NumPy to create uh, this iterative um, model and shape of um, all the data it's collecting. Then we get into the actual model. So model equals sequential. They all use sequential like I talked about. And then to add a layer, you're going to do model.add. We're going to use the long-term, short-term memory as the layer, 256. The shape is the sequence length, which is up here, which is 40, but we modified it using the iterative steps. And then the length of all the characters, which we also created into NumPy zeros. Then we're going to use this dense on this characters in, this is just one layer right here, all the model.adds. And then we're using an activation called softmax. And they all kind of do the same thing. So the model is sequential. Then we add LSTM. This one uses a dropout. And then as you can see, there's one, two, three layers. And it uses the activation softmax. This one has two layers, LSTM. LSTM also uses a dropout of 20%. So again, I'm not going to go over what all this means. Then we're going to compile it, right? So it's going to use a loss called cross entropy. And you can see that here, this loss, it keeps track of it. And then in using an optimizer called RMS prop for this third one. Um, these use a uh, optimizer called Atom. And they're different mathematical models. Then when you see model.fit, that's actually building this model, right? So it passes the X, which is what we've defined here. Y, the batch size, the higher this is, the higher the LSTM model is, the longer it's going to take. And then the epochs. So an epoch is how machine learning learns through a recurring neural network. So epoch 1, 2, 3, 4. If I made this eight, you'd get better clarity, right? The more epochs, the more training, your loss will go down, but it takes longer. Then it uses, uh, this third one uses um, a sample where we use a random um, prediction using some NumPy information. And then we create a function called generate text where we pass it how many characters we want and a temperature. And what the temperature does is it is how uh, detailed do you want it to be in the prediction? So if this was 0.2, this would be even less, um, less what's it called, uh, intelligible, right? It'd be less hard to understand. 
0.8 or 1 is the highest, but it takes the machine learning model longer. So uh, the other models use different ways of doing the model. So this one saves weights and then loads this weights. And then it iterates through each one and then prints it. The first one does something similar, but it does a different thing and it saves, um, creates a checkpoint. And then it loads that uh, weighted average. And so then it does the same thing. It has to iterate through it to create a result. And then you can print that result. So those are the three different types. And then to actually make this third one run, we print. And it calls this generate text. This generate text calls this sample on the model that we trained above. And that's what you got here. So it was kind of unintelligible, but pretty close. Um, if we want to see what the uh, first code created, so this is a problem right here is that um, it just repeated RE, RE, RE over and over and over again. So I will attribute it to user error myself, but I copied the code pretty much exactly and I didn't get the best results. And that was using this stack abuse um code here the second one yielded this so and frequently exacting a higher rent for a single acre of bad land in a town that can be had for a hundred of the best in the country that sounds like great code right but what it's doing is up to right here is the sequence length and then it tries to predict and you can see it run into a similar um repeating pattern so this third code by Neuro9 was the best one that did it. So that's pretty much an overview of this first part. So what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to automatically, probably using Scrapi or Scrapey, uh, the library to automatically pull articles into a text file um, from Yahoo Finance, from where else are we going to go, Zero Hedge, and just create a huge text file of a bunch of um, current, because Wealth of Nations is not current, uh, current uh, monthly uh, economics information. And then what we're also going to do is refine this uh, model, right? So the next video will be more in depth, probably using this uh, neural nines code to try to make it better and better and create something that's really intelligible. And then probably in the last part, um, we will actually post to WordPress because WordPress has an API. And uh, I did a little bit of experimentation with that in a previous video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, again, I'm not a tutorial, so I'm not going to go into this whole code. So go ahead and um, go to the links of the original uh, posters of this. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you want to keep watching me build this machine learning article poster. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you also want to see me build this whole digital assistant. And thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.